Okay, everybody. Let's continue onward into some new cycles. How many cycles? There's so many. I'll be honest with you. This chapter and the next one, we get so many cycles. I promise after that, we really slow down. Chapters 10 and 11, it's hard. After that, it gets gloriously, gloriously simpler. We got a lot of groundwork, so let's get to it. So first off, we got the Sterling cycle. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the idea of what it is. And it won't make much sense because it's mentioning this idea of regeneration. Like, What in the world is regeneration? Like constant expansion, we know what that is. Constant compression, sorry, goodness, not constant expansion. I always read that wrong. Isothermal expansion, isothermal compression. We've seen that before we understand how that works. Heat is being added. Heat is being rejected. But then we have this idea of regeneration. So constant volume regeneration. What is regeneration? Well, regeneration is what we're going to see in the Sterling and Erickson cycles. What it is, is I have at some point a place where heat is being added. Okay, so heat is coming from hot, some hot source and then heat is being rejected to some low source. I put that on the wrong side because I'm a doofus. There we go. T hot, T low. But here's what happens. When I have done some work, you know, I have a working fluid, it is trying to do work. It is always rejecting heat. So at some point, heat leaves the system. That's my Q out. And at some point, heat enters the system. This is Q in. But I want to make that Q out as small as possible. I don't want to reject heat because the more heat I reject, the more heat I've wasted. So how am I going to fix that? How am I going to keep myself from wasting heat? It's not with some magical little paddle wheel thing. We have other devices that do this, but it's what's called a regenerator. What it does is my exhaust gas right here I take that heat and I put it over here. So a nice way of looking at this might be something like the follows. So I'm just going to have my black box of my cycle here. I have my intake and I have my exit, okay? So this right here is my hot gas that's leaving. I have cold gas that's going in. And what I use for regeneration is I take the heat from that hot gas that's leaving that's about to be wasted, and I use some of it to heat up, to preheat the gas that's going into my cycle, okay? So I have this overall cycle, which means that if I do that, I have a higher intake temperature and I have a lower exhaust temperature. That's good. I want that because that's going to improve my efficiency. It's going to make things better. Now, if you look at the cycles right here, this is the Stirling cycle. This is the Erickson cycle. As a note, they're pretty much equivalent. If you look at it, the Sterling Erickson cycle, it's kind of like I just rotated it 90 degrees. Um, for the Erickson cycle, I just have two constant pressure processes rather than two constant volume processes. Regeneration happens regardless. And what you might notice is that these are similar in shape to my Carnot cycle, that magical perfect cycle. Now we can't do the Carnot cycle, but we can do Sterling and Erickson cycles. So this regeneration allows me to have lower um, exhaust temperatures and higher intake temperatures, which is going to be good for my overall system. In fact, because the efficiency for the Erickson Stirling cycle is the same as the Carnot cycle, as in its function is the same, regeneration is going to always improve my efficiency because like I said before, it's going to make sure that I'm wasting as little energy as possible. And here is an absolutely terrible diagram for regeneration. I'm going to do my best to explain it by going from the bottom. So right here, I'm exhausting some heat. What happens is this guy gets filled up with some of that heat. Okay, that's my regenerator. And so then up here, where I would normally be having to put in heat, I then take some of this heat and I have to put in less. Or conversely, rather than saying I have to put in less, my gas is already hotter, and so I don't have to do as much work to make it hotter. So it makes my cycle overall more efficient. I have to use less fuel to make it run, and I'm just making sense. I'm taking the hot stuff and I'm putting it where I need to have hot stuff. I'm taking the cold stuff and putting it where I need to have cold stuff. I'm overall just making things work a little bit better. Vapor cycles, you'll see this a lot. They what's called a feed water heater. And what you do is you have exhaust water. You have your feed water here. And what happens is you have a pipe going in that's cold intake water. 
and you have a pipe going in that's the um, out steam so you're exer exhausting steam and when they go in here they mix like crazy and what you have at the end is you have some very very warm water which is saturated it's a saturated liquid leaving the system so that's a glorious thing we want that to happen because it helps us to avoid having any um, wasted energy at least as little wasted energy as possible okay and here's another way we can see of looking at the um, Stirling and Erickson cycles this one right here is the Erickson cycle just like I said before though instead of having two constant volume processes we now have two constant pressure processes and this one I think is a little bit easier to see what's going on so my turbine has an exhaust that exhaust goes through a generator and it gives off some of its heat because it's giving off some of its heat that means that this is now colder so let's say you know if this right here is t is equal to 200 this one right here is now t is equal to 150. if this one right here is t equals to 20 this is now t equals whatever let's just say 100. the numbers don't worry about the numbers right now i'm just saying that you can see that through this i am able to steal some of that heat and to make my system overall more efficient make my system overall more efficient that's what i want and what you'll find out is that we actually sometimes use multiple stages of regeneration to get as much energy out of our system as possible okay as possible cool so we're going to go into an example now so i'll start that next time thank you so much and i'll see you all later Bye bye